happened is at a certain point, um, the, the Bible was uh, canonized. So what that means is um, the, the kings, the leaders, they took the manuscripts and they said, no, we're going to remove this part and this is the Apocrypha because it's not lawful, it's not canonized, we're not going to use it as uh, an authentic scripture. And we're going to canonize or make the law these, these scriptures and that's what you have in the Bible. Of course, I'm sitting here and I'm thinking like, okay, you're a king, so you have this power to do that, but that doesn't mean what you're doing is right or true. So as a human being, as a person who's educated, you study, you read, you have to research and look at everything. You take the meat and you throw the bones, okay? So uh, if they tell me the Apocrypha is not canonized or it's not lawful, um, no, I'm going to read it and I'm going to compare and contrast and I'm going to see what's what so that I can learn and benefit. So I'm going to read to you from the Apocrypha, which is not canonized, um, according to the kings, you know, and the queens. Uh, but first Maccabees, uh, and that's chapter 3 and verse 48. Now this part in Maccabees, it talks to you about the Jews and how at that time um, they were uh, grieving and mourning the loss of their city and the destruction of their city because of wars and colonization and conquering. So in verse 48, one of the things that the, the coloners or the invaders or the destroyers did to their city was this. It reads like this, verse 48, And laid open the book of the law, wherein the heathen had sought to paint the likeness of their images. So what, what the heathens did, or the attackers did, is they went into their city, and they took their books, their lo books of law, or basically the, uh, the, their scriptures, their manuscripts, their history books, their constitution, they took it, and they removed the pictures of the Jews and they put their own pictures. They put the pictures of the heathens instead of the Jews. Um, now, of course, like I told you before, uh, if you go, for example, to the Coptic Museum in Egypt, you're going to laugh. Why? Because you go inside and the most ancient picture painted for Jesus and the disciples, they are black. Black people. But if you go outside of the museum, there is a big, beautiful mural and they have the holy family of Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, and they are white as snow. They're not even white like the white people in Europe. They're whiter than that. So it's very funny how uh, the Coptics are hypocrites, uh, and they get to do this. And uh, But again, truth speaks for itself, right? So inside of the museum, you have them, uh, uh, like if it's, a muse if it's in a museum, it must be authentic, right? <laughs> like... Um, and it's outside of the museum, there's a mural, modern mural, someone painted it or, you know, put it together, and, and they look white. So my question is, why do, you, why do you change something? Why, if the Bible is like one way, why do uh, scribes or Pharisees or liars feel like they can come and just change the truth? This is something that happened in the ancient times, uh, not just now. And now, you, you know, we all know sometimes you'll say something and then someone else say, no, you said this, no, you said that, and add to what you said or remove something from what you said. And uh, that's called lying, you know. So why do we do that? Of course, people do that for their own benefit. So we have to be smart and wise and we have to research and uh, do our homework, find out what's the truth. And of course, after reading all these books, if you travel and you talk to people of different cultures, you're going to see the truth crystal clear. It doesn't become even a question. You see what nations do what and what nations don't do what. And it's not that difficult to put two and two together. Um, so an another thing I want to add basically is that, yes, the Bible has been changed. And it's still being changed as we speak, just like history. You know, the scribes, they've been given uh, a, a job. This, this, they're entrusted to document history. Today, we have the same issue. People who are entrusted to document history, and it's their job to document history for it to be taught in schools, are writing things from their point of view uh, instead of what the truth is. So that's a big problem that we still have today. And the Bible is not exempt from that. The Quran is not exempt from that they are all been uh, subject to change, and uh, they have been uh, played with. So, the Bible is nothing but a, a history book. It's not a, a, this, like, you know, this book that's untouchable and this and that. No, it's, it's a book of history, and it's the history of the nation of Israel. 
um, if you read the book, it's all about Israel and their relationships with other nations, not anything more or less, and their relationship with their God, which is the God of Israel. Um, so that's how we should begin to see the Bible and other books. They're just books and they're recorded history. But let me tell you, truth is truth, whether you write it, say it, or behave like it. Truth is truth. So you can change a book all you want, but again, truth will stand and it will prove its own self. Now, I have an issue with Egyptians and, and what's going on in Egypt because today, uh, well, for, first of all, we know the library in Alexandria that was burned and they try to tell you, you know, in ancient times it was an accident that it was burned, but no, it was deliberate. They burned all our documents, our manuscripts to, to hide the truth. Today, we know that uh, in the Vatican, in Rome, um, there are many tons of manuscripts that are hidden and kept away and locked away. You cannot see them because if you saw them and you read them, you will find out the truth about the nations and the people. Um, but now, even today in Egypt, you know, from, from you know, all the generations and, and to continue on, you can keep digging and excavating in Egypt anywhere. You're going to find manuscripts and statues and monuments galore. It doesn't ever end. So, uh, again, this is an ancient history. It's the most ancient history, and the truth is buried there. And, of course, Egypt is a target um, for everyone to come in and rape and do whatever they want. And until this day, Egyptians are not allowed to excavate. They're not allowed to research their own history or present it as it is. Instead, you have the foreigners, especially Europeans or European Americans. They're the ones who are allowed to come in. They have full control. They excavate the research, and then they change, uh, you know, information to their liking to do whatever they want with it and prove whatever they want with it. But again, truth stands. Truth is truth, and um, that's what's going to stand, you know. But Egyptians are fast asleep to this, and I'm here to tell you. It's time to wake up. It's time to know who you are and what's what and begin to speak the truth instead of just following priests, pastors, parents, people in general. Know yourself.